In this video, we're going to take a look at Unit 1, Lesson 12, Translating Some Figures. So turn to page um, 82 in your workbook and take a look at this diagram. Write down some things that you notice. Write down some things that you wonder. So pause the video, do that, and come back. All right, some things um, that you might have noticed, and this is not an exhaustive list, so if you noticed other things, um, that's fine. So maybe you notice that there's two triangles, okay, and that the triangles appear to be the same size. Maybe you saw different colors. Maybe you notice that there's no letters on this one. Um, appears that it, there's been a translation because the triangles don't appear that they've rotated at all. Um, maybe you see this line segment um, that looks to have an arrow on the end of it. It looks like there's one triangle that's kind of at this end of the line, and then there's one triangle at this end of the line. Maybe you wonder why there's an arrow here. Um, maybe you wonder, did these triangles move the same length as this segment. And again, there's various other things that you could also have noticed and wondered. So flip to page 83 and notice this diagram. So I want you to get a colored pencil. So I want you to pick two different colored pencils. And in number one, it says that there has been a translation that has taken point V to point W. So what I want you to do in your book is I want you to connect those with a ruler and I want you to draw an arrow. So from V to W, and I want you to draw an arrow connecting those. So it should look something like this. And I will make my arrow a little bit better here so that you can see it a little bit better. And now what I want you to do is find other points that have this same translation that took V to W. So when you're doing this, okay, and let's say you have your ruler and you put your ruler um, to kind of connect those, when you go to find other points, it needs to be the same translation. So it needs to be the same distance and the same direction. So when you move your ruler, don't rotate it at all. It needs to stay this exact same orientation. Okay, so this exact same direction. And then they need to be this far apart. So see if you can find some other points that are connected by this exact same translation. You can pause the video and come back when you have found some. All right, so I'm just going to make this into an infinite cloner so I can just grab um, this arrow and then move it around. So you can find a bunch of different options here. So Z to W or Z to Y would be one. And make sure you start, and when you're talking about this Z to Y, that you start at the side without an arrow and go towards the arrow. Q to L would be one. O to K. I to C. There's a bunch of these different ones that would work. I'm gonna try and get all of them on here so that you can check and make sure that you found correct ones. Looks like T to P. Um, and then just like I said, make sure that you don't um, change the arrow. So L to Q is not correct, okay? We would be looking at Q to L. So it needs to be going in that same direction that this one was, so up and to the um, right. So then write a conjecture about what you're seeing. Remember, a conjecture is just a guess about what you're seeing. So take a second, pause the video, write down at least one conjecture. So something you might have said is it looks like um, that all of these are maybe parallel to each other. Okay, it looks like all of the ones, um, the connection of those, the translation there, that all of those directed segments look like they are parallel to each other. So now I want you to use your other color, okay? And there's a new translation that's gonna take point V to point Z. So I want you to connect that like you did in the last one. 
So connect point V to point Z and draw an arrow, okay, going towards Z. Then I want you to try to find other translations, other points that were um, the same translation or used the same translation, just like you did on the last one. So pause the video, find at least three examples of this translation elsewhere in the diagram. All right, so I can put a few of these on here again. Um, so H to R looks like it works. W to Y. Some people looked at L to T, but we can see that that's a little bit too short. So if you look, this arrow doesn't land exactly on T, so that one does not work. So make sure you didn't use that one. Looks like F goes to P, um, G to S. Don't have anything for C or B. D does go to N. So those seem to be the ones that we can use. And then does it appear that our conjecture from the last um, question still holds true where we thought that it looked like kind of all of these translations create parallel lines? And it does look like we're still seeing parallel lines. All right, then we have this vocabulary word, and if you flip to your lesson summary, you'll see this at the bottom. There's space for you to write this, um, but you heard me say this term, directed segment, when I was talking about um, the translation. So a directed segment is a line segment. It starts and stops at a point. It just also shows you a direction. So it has this set length. So the arrow doesn't mean that it goes on forever. It's just showing you the direction um, the translation is moving. So it has a set length and it has a direction. As you get higher in math, you'll also see this called um, a vector. For geometry, we're going to be calling it a directed line segment, this unit. All right, then we're going to move on to activity 12.3, and you're going to see that I have some tracing paper here. So I want you to set the tracing paper on top of triangle ABC, um, and I want you to trace it. So you'll see on my tracing paper, I have that triangle traced. The number one asks us to translate triangle ABC by the directed line segment that goes from A to C. So you'll see on my diagram, I actually drew that segment so we can see it. And now we want to move this triangle on that segment. So once you've gotten this traced on your tracing paper, we want to move on this segment. So you just want to take literally this point, don't rotate your tracing paper, and move along this line segment, and here's your new triangle. So then you'll want to trace this new triangle or draw this new triangle into your workbook. And then label the new points. So A moved to here. Let me write it in orange. So A moved to right here, so this would be A prime. B moved to here, so this would be B prime. And then C moved to here, so this would be C prime. Then it asks you a couple questions about this diagram. So it's asking you, what is the relationship between line BC, so here's BC, and line B prime, C prime? Now remember the line, when they're talking line, it's the whole line as if this extended. So what do you notice about the relationship between those two lines? And then what do you notice about the relationship of the segments? So those green segments on their BC and B prime, C prime. So write down what you think, pause the video, then come back. So the relationship between those lines seems to be that they're parallel. And then the length of BC and the length of B prime C prime um, appear to be the same length or congruent since we're doing a translation and those are rigid motions. All right, then on this next one, you'll see that I have tracing paper here again. So I've traced segment ED 
And now we're going to be translating DE along the directed line segment W. So we see W written there. And you'll see that I just put a point at the end of W. So that's going to help me be able to know how far to move my tracing paper. So I'm going to take this point and I'm going to move it to the end of that vector or that directed line segment. And then I'm going to draw in my new segment on my student workbook. So I'm just going to draw this in to the student workbook and then label it. So then this would be E prime and this would be D prime. Then answer, um, now it asks you to connect D to D prime. So this time asks you to connect D to D prime and E to E prime. And what shape does it look like you made? And then explain your reasoning. So it looks like we made a parallelogram. And because we did these translations, we talked about it looks like those two lines are parallel. And then also the image connected to the original, okay, these line segments are parallel. Um, so then we ended up with a parallelogram. So then you can discuss um, these questions with your partner. So just pause the video, talk about these questions, and then come back. Then you can write these definitions on your reference chart, making sure that you fill in um, everything from the diagram on each of these. So you can screenshot, pause, get these written down. Then you can discuss this with your partner. So pause the video, talk about it, then come back. So there are two facts related to translations and parallel lines that are going to come up a bunch in the future. One of them is that when we have a line, okay, so I'm, when we just have this blue line, let me see if I can disconnect this. So when we just have a blue line and a point not on the line, okay, when we, whoops, when we are looking at um, parallel lines, let me try and get this. So when we are looking at parallel lines to this blue line, there's an infinite number of parallel lines. We can draw parallel lines all over, but there is only one that will also go through this point. So if we have a line and a point not on the line, there's only one parallel line that can go through that point. And then the other idea is that translations take us to parallel lines. So if you follow a translation, if you do a translation, it's going to get you a parallel line. And we saw that here. We translated DE and it moved to another segment that was parallel to the original. Okay, so translations are going to give us parallel lines. Then you can underline this in your lesson summary. And then be sure to work on this cool down and ask questions if you have any.